Okay, today we're going to be doing a charging jack replacement on a Dell Inspiron 15 laptop. This is a 15 in the 3000 series. And if we take a look at the charging jack here, hopefully you'll be able to see it. It is completely broken out. You can see there that the middle pins, which is what the charger uses to sense information, the one wire circuit, if I put something in there you can see it's loose and the pins holding it in are completely broken. Um, that's pretty common on this model because it has a design flaw in the hinges and the hinge rests up against the charging jack so it presses up against it and when the hinges break the charging jack usually goes with it. So to start getting that replaced, we're going to need to take out the battery. And we have some bottom screws here. You can see that the two screws for the hinges on the bottom have been, uh, well they're missing, but likely the posts underneath are actually broken. Um, or they've just come loose. We'll see when we open it up. But we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have nine screws on the bottom. So we'll start by taking those out now. Um, we do have generic laptop screws here for other laptops. And it looks like we'll need to be using that today to replace those missing screws. But I'll just go ahead and start with taking out the ones that are there. And notice that the one screw here, which is for the CD-ROM, is significantly smaller than the rest. So make sure you take note of that. And then we also have these two. You have one here and one here um, underneath the battery that need to come out. Those are also smaller than the rest. So put those off to the side. Okay, now we want to remove the CD DVD drive and to do it this one's just a dummy but if you see here where it says ODD remove what you do is you just stick a screwdriver or pry tool up in, in here and then you push it out and then that will slide right out and the reason we have to do that is because there are three screws here one two and three that hold the bottom to the top so we will take those out and put those off to the side. And now we are going to open the laptop. Now normally what you'd want to do is leave these two screws in, but since we don't have them, in this case I'm going to put the screw in, hopefully. Yeah, unfortunately the post seems like it's broken, so I can't do that. So we're just going to open the laptop anyway, but normally you would leave those screws in if they were there. Open the laptop now, and now we have to remove the keyboard. So we're going to use our guitar pick here and put the pick in between the keyboard and the plastic, the textured plastic. And we're just going to go all along the top edge there and pull up, and the keyboard should come right out. You can then lift up this black tab here, zoom in so you can see that, lift that up, and that will pull right out just like that that off to the side. Now we have another additional five screws in the bottom here, or on the top I should say. We have one, two, three, four, and the last one. Okay, we can put those screws off to the side. And now you're going to want to close the laptop once again. Flip it back over. Now at this point, if you had these screws and they were still in for the hinges, you would put, you would now take those out. But we didn't have them to begin with because the post is broken. So once those are out, we can pry the bottom off. And to do that, we just use the guitar pick and we stick it in between the bottom plastic and the top side where the ports are. And we go all the way around. 
like so. You should hear the tabs popping open as the kick goes across, and then we can lift this up, and this should come right out. So now we can see these are the hinges here. I'll make sure that these screws are tightened down. Um, they were both very loose, actually. Make sure those are tightened in. We can see the post for one of them is broken, but there are two that are still in. And this is the side with the jack on it. So we're going to take out all the hinge screws here. In this case, it looks like we only have one. We will then pull this hinge up, and there's the jack underneath. It is typical that this plastic breaks off where the screw is. So in this case, we'll just unscrew it. It managed to stay on, but usually that also breaks. Now we can pull up. And on this one, the plug for the jack is actually underneath the motherboard. I don't really know why it was designed that way, but it is. So we're going to have to either try to be very careful in plugging it in and unplugging it, or take the motherboard out if you want to be extra careful, but you can do it without doing that. And the way we'll do that is we will first take out the LCD connector. So we will use if you have a pair of tweezers that would work as well. We'll take this top plastic off. We have this little lever here that has to pop up. And then that pulls straight out like that. Now we can we'll take out this top motherboard screw to give us some flexibility. That should allow us to at least lift up the board slightly, like that. And then the jack we can just pull straight outwards. Now there is tape also holding it down on the top, so you might have to use a little bit of extra force to actually get it out. Once you get it out, you can peel it off, and that tape will come off with it. Okay, so we actually had to improvise with a jack from a different machine. We cut off the leads and soldered them and put some heat shrink on so that they would fit. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have this jack in stock and the customer needed a back ASAP. So we managed to solder their cable to a working connector. Um, all the ones we have were too short. They're for like the 15, um, 3000 different models that have the shorter cable. So this one that we made is a little bit longer now, so we're just going to tape it down. Um, we're going to tape it down with just some normal scotch tape here, just to make sure that it doesn't go above the screw post, because if we screw it down, then we'll break through it. So now that we got that in, we can put the hinge back down and put the hinge screw back in. Now there was only one hinge screw here right there just like that and uh, now we can now we're pretty much done with uh, the actual work part of it now we can reassemble the laptop and then after that we should be good to go so we'll start by putting the bottom back on so I'll zoom back out this way so you can get a good look okay and before we do that we'll put in the motherboard screw we took out and uh, make sure that this piece down here is still aligned. This thing is in there pretty loose. This is the little channel for the LED to light up in the top. So we'll make sure that that's laying in there properly, which it is. And now we can put this on and snap it in. So we'll go ahead and do that and just press down. You'll hear the tabs clicking back in. Also make sure that our jack is unobstructed, which it looks to be we look to be in good shape there. Pop all those tabs back into place, and now we can start putting our screws back in. So we have the three on the side here for the that go underneath the CD-ROM slash DVD-ROM. So that's one, 
two, and three. And now we'll put the hinge screws back in. And we'll see if we can get one on this side. And it looks like we can, actually. So that's pretty cool. We can now open the laptop once we get the hinge screws in. And we have the top screws that we took out. So we have one, two, three, four, five of those. So we'll put those back into place. Keyboard back in, so we'll lay it flat like this and plug in the connector for that. Push that in and flip the tab back down. This can then slide in like that and then press down. Flip it back over again and finish up the rest of the screws. So we had those two for the battery. And we had the actual knockout. Put that back in. We have the CD-ROM screw. And the remaining bottom screws. Several of these are broken out, so what we'll do is we'll find the appropriate screws and then put those in as needed. But that's pretty much it for how to replace the charging jack on this laptop. This is the Inspiron 15, and there will be a link to the jack in the description. If you need to buy the exact part, the part number will be listed on that in the description.